Rudolf Steiner then shares a story in the early 1920s about Isis. And the story is that like Osiris, she too is slain. But rather than being cast into a grave of the earth, as Osiris has been, she is slain and cast into the celestial cosmos. And her grave is the thinking that comes out of celestial mechanics. It says, all of this movement and gesture is the result of forces of gravity and inertia and the things that come to us out of the physical sciences. And that our task in seeking this being is to awaken a relationship. We have to, the, I think the name of the lecture is the search for the new Isis, the divine Sophia. So that when we look into the celestial cosmos <laughs> and recognize beings gesturing there, you could say, although this might sound odd, but this is a way that we awaken Isis or to give a real practical thing that you can do that's kind of challenging in our contemporary culture. Isis and Osiris were also names that were used in Egyptian culture to describe rising and setting things at the, at the open and close of each day. The first object that was visible after sunset that then set over the horizon was called Osiris. The last object that is visible in the east in the morning sky before the sun rises is Isis. So when we look into the starry world surrounding us right now, you can go outside at sunset. This is my most wonderful time of year, or day rather, to go stargazing after the sun has set and the stars aren't showing themselves yet. And then all of a sudden, there they are. And to really try to find out, you know, to slow yourself down long enough to watch which thing is going to go over the horizon first. Is it a planet? Is it a star? Is it the moon? And each of these three things are different from one another. And if I'm living in a culture that is really connected to that, then I'm being informed by something different, if it's a star, or if it's a planet, or if it's the moon. And then the same thing in the morning sky, to get up before the sun, to look at the eastern horizon, to see what's visible, and watch what stays out the longest before the sunlight swallows it up. Is it a star? Is it a planet? Is it the moon? And it changes over time. And sometimes it will be the same star for a long period of time. It could be Sirius. Sirius is the brightest star in our night sky. When it starts to show up in the morning sky, that's the one that's staying out there longest unless Jupiter and Venus are in the vicinity. Those two are brighter than Sirius. But they're moving much quicker. And they'll be there for a while, but then they disappear. Sirius is fixed. Sirius stays there. So this is a way you could then build this <coughs> kind of opportunity for yourself to say, all right, well, what's happening between sunset and sunrise? Ideally, I'm going to sleep. And when I wake up in the morning, I'm bringing with me an experience of having been asleep. And I'm either aware of what that experience is or I'm not. I might have a very active dream life or I might just wake up with a sensation I either slept or I didn't sleep. But then we can ask ourselves the question, is that nighttime experience going to inform my day? And what does the object that's at the eastern horizon have to do with that <coughs> process that I'm going through? I like to think but I tend toward this kind of thinking, that that star or that planet or that moon has the job and it's taking it willingly up on my behalf of taking what I'm bringing out of sleep and offering it to the day. And then she gives birth every morning, every morning. And that part of our task is to 
assist in that labor. So like the quote that was up there a couple slides ago, that everything takes its rhythmic course. That birth of the sun is taking place on time every morning. And if that were to not happen, then there would be chaos of an untold magnitude. But we can kind of enter into that process. And for me, the story surrounding it kind of makes it easier to do it. Not this technical thing, but just there's this birth taking place. The birth of a new day and a being that's presiding over that birth, or actually the one that's giving the birth, and I can become aware of that, and I'm informing it by the experiences that I'm bringing to it out of my sleep, out of my sense of the day or the night, both offering to the, to the, to the dawn and to the dusk. <coughs>